My name is Dr. Shona McCarthy and I'm a paediatric psychiatrist. I'm a medical specialist who deals with mental illness and mental health disorders. But today I'm going to focus on coping with depressive illness. Now many of us are familiar with low mood and depression, which are words used very easily to describe how sometimes we may struggle or have down days uh, because of what life throws at us and what other things may be going on. That's not what I'm here to talk about today. Today I'm specifically talking about a depressive disorder. And most of you watching this already know the difference between the two because you're already attending a CAMS or child psychiatric service. What is a depressive disorder? Well, there are many things that can contribute to a depressive disorder, but in its most simplistic way, there is something different about how neurotransmitters in the brain regulate and that's different in people who suffer with depressive disorder compared to people with don't who don't and this um, is something that can tend to run in families sometimes and how would you notice such a thing in your child well the things that you may have noticed in your child that they may be more sad they may be more lethargic or have less energy they may have new sleep difficulties, changes in appetite, changes in energy levels, their motivation may be different. They may find that they don't enjoy life in the way they did before. Their concentration may change, so they may be less able to do their schoolwork or may seem distant. They may become more clingy, particularly if younger, or they may become more socially withdrawn. And sometimes for some young people, life may just seem so overwhelming. And this can be particularly difficult and worrying for you as parents at a time like this. So what can be done to help your child? Well, those of you already attending CAM services know that there are very effective treatments, both medical and non-medical. For those of you who are worried about your child, who do not attend a CAMS or child psychiatric service, if you are worried about your child, it is important to go to your GP if you think that there's something here more or beyond what you would expect given the current stressful changes to our lives. For those of you that already um, are attending CAM services, it's really important to remember that we're still here, we're still available to support you, even though we're doing it in different ways. If you are on medication or if your child is on medication, it is really important that you continue with the medication and supervise giving it and give it in the same way at the same time as you always did. It's important to keep that medication safe and out of sight and out of reach of the child. It's also important to know that you can ring us and we can arrange for script to be posted to you or faxed to your GP or faxed to the pharmacy. And pharmacies are also more flexible regarding giving medication at this time. It's also important that the non-medical uh, treatments that have been used in your situation are continued. So whatever new skills or habits that have been encouraged with your child, it could be useful for you to go back over those with the child. And it's important again to link with your clinic and with the person in the clinic who's helping you with these. Although we're all working differently at the moment and doing less face-to-face -face work than we are used to doing, we are actually learning new ways of doing things and we are in a position to support you, not just to give advice over the phone, but actually also to talk you through ways of helping support your child. Um, in some instances, clinics may be giving out um, helpful uh, fact sheets or maybe um, homework as part of a talking therapy, or sometimes they may be giving more routine advice. COVID has changed all of our lives in ways that we didn't expect. And how we cope and how we adapt to that is different for everybody. And it's the same with young people who may have a depressive disorder. So while it's really important you take the medication as prescribed and you continue with any talking therapies or non-medical advice that you've been given, it's really important that you also remember the basics. A healthy routine, 
good nutrition and eating habits, regular exercise and good sleep habits are very helpful for all of us at this time. And it's really important for families to share how they do these things and to share routines. And that will also help your young person. Uh, it's important to tailor what you expect of them realistically. But it is worth thinking about having them up at a regular time each day, um, having some exercise involved each day. That could be kicking a, a football around the garden. It could be doing some yoga. It could be going for a walk. It depends what works for your child and your family. And don't forget to have fun. You know, as part of your routine, sitting down as a family to watch a movie or to kick a ball around for fun in the garden or to do some baking or cooking together, there are lots of different ways to have a routine that suits your child and your family. We've also noticed that some young people with depressive disorder, in fact, are quite liking uh, the current circumstances. Uh, for some young people, the social demands of school or extracurricular activities are simply too much when they have um, depressive symptoms. So for many young people, you may find that they are happy to be close to their family and to have a good routine and they're feeling less stressed. Now for others, that is a different story. And we, for all the reasons that I've said, having routine and exercise and contact with friends, if they're no longer available to somebody who really finds them helpful, that can make the current circumstances for somebody with a depressive disorder even more challenging. So it's really important to see how you can replace those. So for example, social media may be very important in terms of keeping in touch and seeing what's going on. So it's important to manage that and set limits on it that are appropriate to your child and that don't interfere with other healthy habits like sleep and exercise. And you may need to replace um, other sporting activities with ones that can be done in your own garden or within your own household. Don't forget to remind your young person and indeed yourself that this won't go on forever. That this is a time in our lives when things have to be simplified and there are advantages to this. Praise your child for all the efforts they are making to cope in the current circumstances. And don't forget to keep in touch with your CAM service. And finally, it's really important as a parent that you mind yourself, that you also eat well, have a good routine, keep in contact with your friends and your own support network, and link with your GP if you need to, to ensure that your health is as good as it can possibly be at this time. COVID won't be here forever, and we do look forward to seeing all of you when this is over. But in the meantime, we are here to support you. Mm -hmm.